Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Deanna, and today I want to show you how to edit motion graphics. Check it out. First things first, you want to find a PNG image, an image that has a transparent background. So look at this. When I get rid of my black solid, and you press this button right here, this will toggle on your transparency grid. Bam. So these little, this little checkered board stuff right here, this just means that there is no background. You can put this phone over any kind of video footage, photos, and things like that, and it'll only be the phone showing. It won't pick up any of the background. All right? So I'm just turning that back on, just to give it a little personality while we're editing. But okay, here we go. So now that you have your PNG image of a cell phone or a device, we want to edit this Instagram logo section, right? So here we go. Right now we're starting with the Instagram PNG logo and then we have the word Instagram right beside it. So I just made sure that each element is its own thing, okay? So this is the IG word, bam. This is the logo, bam. Now I'm gonna start with this logo. What I wanted to do is to start really small and get big and kind of spin at the same exact time. So how do we do that? Check this out. I'm gonna go down to my transform and I want to make a keyframe here and let's just hit the position just in case I want to do something there too. Oh, and also the rotation because I want it to scale and I want it to rotate. So let's say maybe about seven frames. You can see your frames right here. All right. And then I'm going to add another keyframe. And this keyframe is to say, okay, it's going to start at this point and then it's going to do some stuff and end up right here, aka right here here side by side perfectly together so now that we have keyframes at the beginning and at the end i want to start animating from the beginning right so i've already told the computer i want my i want the final position to look exactly like this now let's go ahead and start it off a little bit differently i know i want my scale to start off very small so let's make that zero okay you can make it zero here on this left side or the right side it doesn't matter okay and then let's go over to our rotation keyframe and make sure you're only selecting this one because if you happen to uh have the these selected for some reason and you just you're making adjustments it's going to make adjustments to both keyframes that are highlighted so only click the one that you want okay so now i want to go ahead and hmm let's see maybe negative 80 that's good enough for me. Okay, let's play it and see what we look like. Cool. All right, so now me, what I personally want to do is, okay, I want it to kind of come up, but I want it to, I guess, bounce just a tad. So I'm going to go over a few key frames and to make it bounce a little bit or have that kind of look like it is, you want to adjust the scale because you want it to, to look a little differently so here we go it's already at 13 and i think i'm gonna make it about 18 be a little bit bigger and then scroll over just a bit more and go back to 13 so it can settle in in its normal position take a look bam so it, it does it does a good job it gets bigger then it gets smaller and it settles right but it's a little choppy i want it to be a bit smoother so how can we do that you can use key frames so I go right here, I'm click. I'm right clicking on that keyframe, the very last one, keyframe assistant, easy ease. All right, it'll make it smoother. Now, what is easy ease? Let me show you. Maybe it'll, it'll be easier to kind of understand if, you show, if I show it to you visually. So this is the graph editor, and I just zoomed in all the way just so we can clearly see what's happening here. Let me move this over as well. All right, so you can literally grab this and adjust the smoothness of everything. All right, so I'm just gonna move it like that. That way um, the element can kind of, it'll go fast and kind of slow. So check this out. All right, so I'm noticing that my keyframes are a bit too close together. So I wanna make an adjustment. That's fine. All right, let's move on. Let's keep this thing rolling, let's go fast. Oh wait, one little thing. I want to put an easy ease on my rotation. I like to easy ease everything really. All right, so everything looks good. Now let's go ahead and animate the Instagram part. How do we do that? All right, now here's the key thing. I want to use these things called mats. They're kind of like a mask. They kind of hide certain things you don't want to see and reveal other things. So in order to use a mat, you want to make sure you're not clicked on anything, okay? Like click on this bland gray area here, okay? And then go over to this rectangle tool and I'm gonna make a mask, a mat. 
All right, so I am just covering up that Instagram thing. I want to rename it just so nothing gets tricky. Call it a mat, all right? And then I'm gonna bring that mat right above my logo. All right, and then now I wanna make sure that we can see the logo. No one wants this ugly black box. So go to your track mat. Now, if you don't see that, you can hit this toggle and switches mode and it'll bring up more information if you don't have it. And if, if you're still not seeing certain things, you can right click and go to columns and then select whatever you actually need. So let's go to track mat. I want to put it alpha mat and bam, you can see it. All right. Now, I want to make this Instagram word kind of slide out from the right of this logo right here. So how do we do that? Let's go. I want another mat. So I'm going to copy hitting command C, command V, and just dragging it right above the actual word, right? So now we've got this mat and I want this word to um, be alpha inverted mat. Okay. And then I'm going to take this word and I'm going to adjust the position. So that way it slides from left to right. Here we go. And I also want to make sure I go to the keyframe where this stops. All right. And I'm noticing that my mat is not big enough. See right here, the logo is getting cut off. All you have to do is just make the mat like right here. That's fine. Okay. Perfect. Now, okay, now back to business. We're trying to animate this Instagram word. So I want my word, I want to move it from left to right. So what do we do? You need to make another keyframe. We're going to use position because we're just moving the position. That's all we're altering. Okay, I'm making a key point right there because that's where this stops going from small to big. And then just scroll over a bit and I'm, I'm saying like, okay, right here, that's where this movement is going to stop. So I already know where I want my thing to end. Let's see where we want it to begin. Okay, I'm clicking on my keyframe. I'm going to move this over to the left. And you see it's disappearing. The only reason it's disappearing is because we made those mats, okay? So we're seeing a little bit of the word right here. So we need to adjust the mat that's right here, okay? We're going to move this over right here. So now it's covered because this mat is hiding whatever is under it, okay? And it reveals whatever is not, whatever it's not on. All right, so let's check out what we have. Okay, so you notice it's way too fast. So I'm gonna go over to my keyframes and just move it around a bit, okay? And let's see what we have now. Perfect, okay? Now, you may look at this and say, hmm, it's not, not perfect, so let me adjust this mat right there, okay? I like that. All right, so now, I, like again, it's, it's, it stops too abrupt. So we're gonna go to this keyframe and we're gonna make it go easy ease. Easy ease, and then I like to click on it and then click on the graph because I wanna further tweak it, make it even smoother. Cause you see, it, it kinda starts up fast and then goes slow. Okay, but we want it to really, really slow down when it lands. So let's, let's check it out. I love that. Okay, so now, hmm, what else can make this better? Well, how about we blur this while it's moving? Because it's moving so fast, you kind of want it to blur. So how do we do that? I'm going. I'm clicking this uh, graph thing again just to put this away and go back to our normal keyframes where you can see everything clearly. So, how do we make this all blurry when it's moving? Hit this toggle and switch button, and you'll notice right here it's called motion blur. Click that on. And then you also want to make sure it's on right here. If this is off and this is on, it's not going to show anything and vice versa. If that's off and this is on, nothing different is going to happen. So keep in mind, you need both to be on. I like that. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, and then also uh, the video clip is actually much longer, but I uh, made it short just so I can replay just this essential part that I just want to review over and over again. So... Bam, and we're done. That's that, okay? So now let's go back to the phone. Okay, so check it out. Looks perfect. All right, so now I wanna animate my profile image, okay? So the first step is to find an image that you wanna use as your profile picture. I have mine right here. All I do is just drag it to my timeline. 
it's quite big because it's from a professional camera so it's large um, I only want kind of like my head and maybe a little bit of the chest area here the image starts as a rectangle we want it to be a circle how do we do that make sure you're selecting whatever you're trying to make into a circle go right here if you hold down it'll show you some other different options here I'm going to use the ellipse tool I want a perfect circle so I'm going to hold down the shift button and then drag all right there we go I'm hitting V to get rid of that uh, tool okay so now that we have our circle there uh, I want to make sure that I'm centered so I am going to make sure I double click on the mask okay that box will appear and then you can kind of drag it to the area that you actually like that's cool okay and then now I clicked out of that and now I can drag the whole thing over bam perfect okay so now I also want a white outline around that okay let's do it I want to click out of everything and I want to make a new solid so let's do a solid I want it to be a white line outside of it okay and then I want to grab my tool once more and I want to hide this that way I can make my circle the way it should be so just imagine that it's there because you're still making the mask on this because you're clicked on it but I just want it to be away so that way I can actually see what I'm doing so I'm going to hold down the shift button and make a perfect circle all right I want it over my thing um, yeah that sounds fine okay so what you want to remember though is that you want everything to kind of be centered and on it on each other so I'm clicking both and I'm gonna align my layers okay I want to align them horizontally and vertically that looks good to me that looks that's nice all right next we want to turn back on our white layer and because it's on top that's why it's like that but we're gonna bring this below and then bam we got a white outline I'll go ahead and rename that so it doesn't get confusing all right now that we have our profile picture with a white outline I want to take it a step further and make it look a little bit like the Instagram logo so how do we do that I'm going to duplicate my white outline layer I hit command C command V to do that and I'm going to rename it rainbow outline just to keep things organized all right so now we got this rainbow outline I only want to look at it so I'm going to hit this circle button right here and this will only show the element that you have the circle on okay and um, for some reason this is not in the center so I am going to hit this button right here and by the way this is an anchor point for those of you who didn't know there's also a shortcut to put it right directly in the middle but I can't remember it at the moment but okay so we've got this we want to make it into a kind of a gradient so search your effects and presets if you don't see it there go down to your window and then just make sure it's checked okay let's search, search gradient that's not how you spell gradient uh, gradient ramp no I want four color gradient four color gradient has four different colors you can put in there gradient ramp is usually like two so four color gradient ramp on my rainbow outline and look you have different colors there but I want to make it the Instagram colors so I'm just gonna go over here they don't really have green but they do have um, yellow well you already got yellow we're gonna have orange let's do orange yeah that's that's cool orange color uh, orange what colors orange purple pink yellow orange purple pink eh. pink uh, I think it was purple okay so now we have our different colors selected and if you notice this button that kind of thing right there those are the points that the colors start okay so if you bring this in you'll get more yellow if you bring this one in you'll get more pink all right so that's really cute uh, I'm zooming out because I have these other ones over here on the side and I'm just gonna bring this in closer as well I like that we're looking good I feel like this orange is not different enough so let me see 
yeah that helps okay cool so now that our rainbow outline is done look at that it's so cute i love it it's so cute 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 all right so that outline looks really cute it reminds me of the instagram logo uh now i want to uh, make sure that we can see our white stroke line that was there i'm going to put the rainbow behind the white that way i can just see everything better and let's go i want to double click on it and hold down shift so i can still have a perfect circle okay and let's see here let's move it over a bit Um, yeah, I like that, but I want my white stroke to be a tad smaller, so I'm going to go into my mask and into the expansion, and we're going to make it smaller. Okay, just drag it over, negative 15. Okay, that looks good. I'm not sure it's completely centered, so let's fix that. So, that's what we have now, all right? Let's go back and see what we look like. All right, it looks good. Uh, now, all, we, all I want to do to animate this is kind of just make it fade on very simply because this is already doing a lot. I want that to be simple and then we'll get a little bit, a little more complicated as we go on. So right here, I just want a simple fade on. So this right here, user icon, I have my own comp with that information in there. That's where we did all the adjustments, okay? So I'm back to my main comp. Uh, this one here, I just want to simply animate it so it fades. That's all we're going to make it do. All you have to do is go to your opacity and again with the key points. Have a starting point, have an end point. Uh, make sure the end point is exactly what you want it to look like size-wise and everything. Um, and opacity setting-wise. So I think the picture is a bit gigantic so I'm going to reduce the size. That looks better. Cool. All right. So moving on to step number three. We only have two more left. Okay. After this one. So this one is very, very simple. It's literally just my name and I faded it on as well. So we're not even going to redo that one. Just know you just type some words. You can use the type tool. This right here, you click that. Like, let's say you click here, you can click there and then you write whatever you got to write. Okay. Simple as that. All right, so now it's time to animate the next section. I want to animate the post, the followers, and the following numbers, okay? So how do we do that? I'm just zooming in just so we can mainly just look at what we need to focus on. All right, so we want these numbers to kind of like go up or whatever. So I'm going to use this effect called decoder. All right, so if you search your effects and presets, it's a preset, and search decoder, decoder fade in, okay? And all I did was just drag it, dropped it on my text layer that had the numbers. I did that for each single one, okay? And I would, again, I made a keyframe for when it's gonna start, when it's gonna end. So as you can tell, it starts with absolutely nothing, can't see anything, and then it kind of comes on, and it animates through the numbers, all right? That's all it is. And last but not least, well, actually, this is not the last step. <laughs> I forgot. There's also camera movement going on. But uh, follow button. Okay, what do we do for the follow button? I made this its own comp as well. I like to comp things because it kind of gets things out of the way and it just groups certain things together that need to be together. So I'm going into my follow button. I made it just by making a shape layer and then a text layer on top. Okay, in order to make a follow button, it's so simple. All you need to do, I'm just going to hide it because I'm going to use these again. But, uh, okay, let's make sure we're not clicked on anything. Layer, new, solid. I want a blue solid that looks like that button. Um, I think it was around that color. All right, so we got that right there. Now we want to make the actual button. So go back to your shape tool. We've been using this a lot, but uh, I want a rectangle with some rounded corners. So let's switch it up. We're going to do that. And then you're just going to drag it to the shape that you want. And then after that, we're just going to make a word say follow. That's it. So simple, y'all. Follow. That's obviously not the color or the font I want. Uh, what font did I use before? I don't remember. Let's see. Proxima Nova. It's a very simple font. And I googled what font they use, and they said that Instagram uses this font. That's why I chose it. It's not just random. I usually do research. 
Okay, so we got that, and I want it to be white. This section right here, this eyedropper tool will switch it from white to black uh, very, very quickly. Instead of you having to click on here and then find the color wherever you want, you know. Uh, and then if you don't know, this is for the fill color, like everything you see there, and then this will be like an outline. Uh, let's say if you happen to want to outline some of your text, you could do it that way. Okay, but we're not trying to outline. Uh, then I'm just going to switch it quickly to white, and I'm going to switch the font to Instagram's font, Proxy Manola. Let's go with bold. All right, and then I'm just going to click that. Follow word, the follow word and the new blue solid that I just created. I'm going to go to align because I want my layers to kind of be on each other. And in order for it to be perfectly centered, you want to align horizontally as well as vertically. We made our follow button with the blue background and the white text. And then I'm going to go back to my main comp. And right here, that's where I had everything comps. That's where I had my follow button comps. Go right here. Go to the transform area. And what I wanted to do is kind of fade on slowly. So you see right here, this is my opacity settings. I started at zero because I wanted to fade on. So zero, then just scroll over a couple frames and then set it to 100% so we can see this comp right here. That's right here. All right. And then again, you can go to your graph editor and adjust your settings to your liking. Alrighty. And then also, if you notice, I even made the button kind of bounce a little bit because I added the clicking sound effect. So I just wanted it to move accordingly. So here's what we did. I'll delete all of this and start over. So uh, we're going to start here. And then I want it to kind of get bigger. So I'm going to adjust the scale just a bit. And go here and bring it back down. And then bring it up one more time. And that'll be the final position. Uh, I think that's good. My computer is so slow and old. Like, I hate that it buffers so much. Uh, maybe I want my button a bit bigger. All right, so check out our button. Check out the movement. Bam, that's what I meant by it kind of bounces a bit. So I want it to be a tad smoother. So again, click on your keyframe. Make it sure it says easy ease. Go to your graph and adjust however you want now when I pull it to the left like that I'm pulling it because I want it to start fast and then really really slow it down as it gets to its final position all right so that's that and uh, also remember the the post followers and following words those are just simply faded on as well as the at Deanna did that so that's kind of why I skipped over those two but thank you thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and learned something new so if you learned anything hit it hit me up in the comments if you have any questions about anything let me know in the comments below all right stay safe bye bye